Ooh, what's going on, Print Fam? It's your boy Cam. Today, we're gonna troubleshoot some of the common issues that come up when you're trying to burn and wash out your screens after the intro. In regards to screen making, in the past, the way that I've done it is by trial and error. Today, I'm gonna do things the right way by utilizing an exposure calculator, doing the math, and finding my times. And I'm gonna hopefully learn how to do it, and during the process, show you guys how to do it. And together, we're gonna become better screen printers. Yeah. I like how my go-to right there was to do like the, the, the uh, double arm flex, that was, ridiculous. I downloaded the exposure calculator uh, from Anthem Screen Printing. Now there's a series of different types of calculators that you can get. Some have like density filters applied on them so that you don't have to do it the way that I'm about to do it. But this one's free uh, and you know, th there was some serious calculation shit going on, but we're gonna figure it out together. Tip, don't tip, don't tip. Let me get some paper. Our exposure calculator film that I just printed out, got my instructions and I got my piece of paper. This is what you need. Let's read the first step here. It says, approximate how long you think it will take for your screen to burn. Example, 120 seconds. Okay, now you're gonna take the amount of time you guessed and multiply it by 1.5. I'm gonna say our exposure times on this are actually 15 seconds. Okay, so that's where we're gonna start. Starting with 15, uh, we're gonna take that amount of time, 15 seconds, and multiply it by 1.5 times 1.5 equals 22.5. All right, so that's our first calculation. Uh, and then we're gonna take that new time and divide it by 10. So we have 22.5 divided by 10 equals 2.25 seconds. Okay, so we have two seconds to 22 seconds, basically. Tape the calculator to the screen. So the way that this is gonna work is that you have your first line here and you cover everything except that first line and you're going to expose it using the third time, which is our lowest time, which in my case is two seconds. In your case, it might be 10 seconds, 20 seconds, I don't know. You needed to do the formula to figure out what your time is. But for us, it would be two seconds. So we burn it at two seconds and then we're gonna move the paper down and we're gonna do it again at two seconds. Keep working your way down the list and you'll, you know, you'll get up to, in our case, it'd be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We'll work down the whole spectrum in two second increments. We're gonna find our exposure times. This line's been hit at two seconds. Dropping this paper down to the next line. All right, like a good little boy, I made my way down the lines, all 10 of them, in two second increments. Uh, let's see what it says to do now. Explain it a little, 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 Um, okay. Wash out the screen. We'll let that dry, we'll come back to it in a second. Okay, now the screen's not completely dried, but let's just see what it has to say. Wash out the screen, allow to dry, and determine which row came out best, okay. So nine washed out, eight washed out. It looks like number three is the best. It held the most dots. So I really am liking three. Take the number of the best row and subtract it from 11. And our best row was three. So 11 minus three equals eight. So it got exposed a total of eight times during the test. Uh, if you were burning in 18 second increments, the correct exposure would be 126 seconds. We were burning in two second increments. So eight times two equals 16 seconds is our exposure time. Now, I feel like because we use the exposure calculator to find our proper times, these next troubleshooting processes are kind of redundant because if you do that, this stuff probably won't happen. But we're gonna go over this stuff anyway. So the first one will be premature stencil, stencil breakdown. So you burn it, you take it over to the washout booth and for some reason, uh, the stencil's breaking down, it won't hold detail. We're gonna start with underexposing, wherein 
we hit the screen with not enough light and we're gonna see what happens when we do that. Got another 225 screen here. This one's beat to shit. What do we know? We know that the correct exposure time for this exposure table is 16 seconds. What I'm gonna do is, is go to the extremes and I'm gonna underexpose this three seconds. Vacuum. Boom. All right, it's set at five, but this is actually for three seconds. It takes two seconds for the light to turn on. And here we go. And vacuum blanket off. Just to reiterate, this screen was exposed for three seconds, way less than the time that we need to to properly expose the screen. Let's see what happens. And this one is mm, more or less useless. This is the effect of underexposing a screen. And you'll see various degrees of this depending on how off you are from your correct exposure time. Premature stencil breakdown, say it with me, underexposed on the exposure unit. The next scenario is, it's actually another common one and I see that it's funny, more people tend to do an overexposure and here's why. If you have a shitty film that is not printed with a dense black image, you're gonna find that you're, you're getting the results of overexposure in that because the stencil's not dense enough, it allows light through and then that light is able to hit the mesh which is partially exposing it and it makes it very difficult for you to wash it out. <laughs> we know our proper exposure time is 16 seconds, right? We're gonna give this thing a full minute exposure. While that's uh, exposing over there, there is another tip that I wanna give you in regards to stencil breakdown. If you find that you've done your exposure calculations and, and you're still having that stencil breakdown even though you feel like everything else is correct, Make sure, make for damn sure that you are degreasing that mesh properly after you reclaim the screens and that you're coating it in a timely manner after the screen is dried. Those two things will oftentimes lead to premature stencil breakdowns. So address those two things as well. All right, that is done. After you come off the thing, you're, you're reducing your times, you're, you're trying to burn the screen and no matter what you do, you cannot get that image to wash out. You're hitting it with water, you're soaking it, you're, and it's just like, you cannot clear it. You're over exposing, in which case you need to first address your films. If you have a crappy film output printer, if you haven't converted to black max or to some kind of black dye system, you're gonna have problems. That's the first thing you need to tackle. This is screen print, baby. The most important piece of equipment you have is your films. Every, everything else you can actually hack and cobble together, but your films are the first area that you need to address above all else. If you have good films and you're exposing on the thing and you still can't get the thing to wash out, it could be two things. First, you're just overexposing it for too long and there's, it's allowing enough light or heat to get through uh, and it's kind of exposing the areas that it shouldn't. The other thing to keep in mind, and this is the most common issue of why you can't get the thing to wash out is probably because you have actually exposed the screens before you did the burn. So you go, you have your film on the table, you go grab your screen, it's safe in here, it hasn't been exposed, so you think, and you set it on your table like you should, but especially if you're out in an area where there is some UV output, you're gonna have problems. And notice, as I'm sitting here dicking the dog, talking to you guys, I haven't put the cover down on the thing. Well, what's happening right now, although not as fast as if I hit it with the actual light, like this, it is nonetheless getting UV, small amounts of UV, either from my open garage door, they're making their way in and hitting the back of this. Uh, some UV output from the fluorescent overhead is hitting the back of this, and it's exposing the entire screen. Doesn't really matter at this point if you have a film under it, if you do everything correctly. If you're dilly-dallying and you're, ex and you're not in the dark room or a UV safe environment, your screen is exposing. The longer I sit out here waiting, the less likely I'm gonna be able to do a washout. So keep an eye on this. So the way to handle this is to keep your screen safe and sound in the dark room. Film is down, done all the bullshit that I need to do. I've taped it, all that kind of stuff. Now I can grab my screen immediately set it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And uh, that was not either quick or efficient. Set the thing in there, 
Lids closed, now we're safe. So if you have your light source at least two feet from the surface of the glass, it will allow that point source to spread wide enough that it hits the entire edge of the screen. If, however, you do the following, oof, a little janky, but it should do the job. Now that is about six inches from the glass. <coughs> I'm gonna use this graphic from my dude over at Breakfast Supply Co. This is a two, 225 mesh uh, that has not been cleaned because Jesse is horrendous at cleaning screens. We're gonna drop this bad boy down, I'm going to pre-soak it. You can see what's starting to happen here. It's not a great example, but the light source was concentrated in this area, and down here in the corner, you're seeing the stencil start to break down. Too much light, not enough light, because there wasn't enough spread. If it's too close to the screen, it'll get overexposed here, and it'll be hard to wash it out, and then as this, the light spread is reduced, anything out in the corners that didn't get hit with enough UV light will break down, and you'll have this weird, uneven stencil breakdown. So when it's a point source, you need to pull that source at least two feet away. I would say two and a half, three feet to be safer. Uh, and you'll get a nice, even distribution of light around the entire surface of the screen. That's that. That's what happens with the point light system. And that concludes our tips for helping you burn screens. Hopefully, there was some useful information in there. If you have any other questions or comments, or you got some tips that I forgot to include in this video, be sure to leave them in the comments. We want to start a dialogue. We're trying to get as much information out to the community as possible. Now, we have some more stuff coming here in the near future, more training tutorials, and a lots of experimentation coming from yours truly. Thank you so much for hanging with me, Print Fam. Hey, peace out.